Hello my friends, welcome here. I'm Amy Esther. I live with POTS or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And today I wanted to share with you some symptoms of POTS that aren't talked about very much. Typically when you look up POTS, things like lightheadedness, fainting, dizziness, or rapid heartbeat are the symptoms that come up. But there are so many other symptoms that go along with POTS. So today I'm gonna tell you some that you may have never heard of. The first one I wanna share with you happens to me pretty much every time I don't wear compression socks which is very rare. I pretty much put them on as soon as I wake up, and this happens every time I take a shower because I have to stand without my socks on. My feet and my legs immediately start itching and burning, and this is one of the things that nobody really talks about, and it's not really on all the POTS websites, but it happens to me Every time I stand without socks on, my feet have this burning feeling. Going along with that, I also get really red feet when I stand because all of my blood is pooling at my feet. And I do get a burning feeling when I stand, but it's like a burning feeling. They're not actually hot, I think. I guess I've never really felt them, but it feels like they're burning, itching. However, on the opposite end, I also get ice cold extremities so like my hands and my feet will get really really cold particularly at night like my husband says they feel like they are literal ice cubes another weird symptom of pots is adrenaline surges with pots your fight or flight response might kick in at unexpected times mine especially happens at night which is so annoying because you're trying to sleep and then you feel this like adrenaline rush it is so annoying and so weird as well as like sensory overload. Anything that I do that involves the senses and it's just even just a little bit more than my day to day, it just overwhelms me and my pot symptoms flare up. It's really weird, but if I'm in crowds, even like being at a movie theater where things are really loud, theme parks, emotional stressors, when it's just like extra emotion, and particularly when I cry. I feel like my pot symptoms flare up when I have a good big cry. Even if I watch like an emotional or a stressful movie, I feel like my pot symptoms get worse. I've had to stop watching shows before because I just feel like they make my symptoms worse. It's so weird, but it's like there's just this overload of any kind of sense or sensation, my POTS gets worse. Another thing that's very common, I think with any chronic illness, but it is found a lot in people with POTS is depression. I think it's just really difficult to live with chronic illness and chronic pain and chronic fatigue and not be able to live the life you wanna live, not have other people who understand. And it's hard not to just feel depressed, which is why I recently launched a community for people who live chronically ill so that they can have support, we can lift each other up, and we can find a way to enjoy this life as well as understand each other. So if you want information on my community, I will link everything down below. I personally have struggled with depression, especially over the past few years. It's gotten really bad, <laughs> which is why I started my community, but I think it's pretty common when you live with POTS. Another really weird one that I didn't quite realized was a POTS thing until I was kind of doing some research for this video, and that's bladder issues. So I'm just gonna read what I found, potsuk.com. It says urinary systems are common, sorry, symptoms. <laughs> urinary symptoms are common in many conditions which affect the autonomic nervous system such as POTS, and approximately two thirds of patients with POTS have been shown to have bladder problems. In our experience, these symptoms often include a very sudden and unpleasant need to pass urine without too much prior warning. This can on occasion be associated with mild ur urinary leakage. The abnormal nerve transfer in POTS appears to affect the normal signaling, sorry, hold on, the normal signaling from the bladder to the brain. People without POTS are typically aware that their bladders are beginning to become full. They have plenty of warning giving them time to find a bathroom and they only tend to experience unpleasant urinary urgency if they quote, hold on for too long. But people with POTS unfortunately do not have this prior mild warning that their bladders are nearly full and experience a sudden unpleasant feeling when their bladders are full. People with POTS are often on a high salt diet and fluid diet as well, which can exacerbate the urinary problems. Secondly, the normal bladder should empty quickly and completely without a strain. Patients with POTS can find it difficult to empty their bladder efficiently. The flow can be weak. Patients feel they cannot enter their bladder completely and often report to need a double void 
and to strain to pass urine. What's interesting is I actually had a prolapsed bladder, I think that's what it's called. I needed to get a urethra sling. So I had surgery for a hysterectomy and at the same time, they put in a urethra sling. I used to pee my pants multiple times a day. I mean, all the time. And sometimes I'd walk into the bathroom and I'd start peeing before I sat on the toilet. Like it was so bad. And now that I've had this surgery, I find that I have a hard time going. Like I will sit down and it's hard to get it moving. So anyway, I don't know if that is totally all related to POTS. I have multiple chronic illnesses and uh, I do have some doctors who think I might have EDS, which would explain the prolapse and everything. But what this explains, I have experienced as well of just like all of a sudden I have to pee out of nowhere. Like I have to go right this minute. So very interesting. Okay. Anyway, the next one is a flushed face. This is again something I didn't realize was POTS related until I started doing research for this episode because it's something I've dealt with for a really long time is that I get flushed so quickly and easily, not just like getting embarrassed. I mean, it does happen when I get embarrassed, but just like if it's been a long day or if I'm out a lot or um, like we talked about before with the sensory overload, if I have a sensory overload, I feel my face get flushed, it gets hot, it gets bright red. What's actually really funny about me is I have a white dot on my head that's a birthmark, so it has no pigment. So when my face gets flushed, <laughs> it pops out. I used to get made fun of a lot in elementary school. But what's interesting is the National Library of Medicine had a study and they said that 77% of the patient, POTS patients in their study complained of having facial flushing or rash. So let me know in the comments, does this happen to you? I definitely get it. You probably can see it in some of my videos. The next one that I feel like people don't talk enough about, even though it's super common with POTS, is having GI issues. I mean, all of them, gastroparesis, gastritis, SIBO, uh, nausea, acid reflux, just all the GI problems. It seems like most people that I know who have POTS have some sort of GI issues as well. Another thing that, again, I don't know why when you look at POTS, it's not part of it because I swear most of the people I talk to have POTS have this, which is unexplained pain or maybe fibromyalgia, which is widespread pain and fatigue, but just pains in different places. Like I get the worst muscle aches and it is confusing when you live with multiple chronic illnesses and that is something with POTS that you often have other things with it. It often goes along with other chronic illnesses or it triggers other illnesses or it is triggered by another illness. <laughs> and so you have a lot of symptoms and it's hard to know what's from what, but I know my muscle pain gets worse when I don't treat my POTS. So I feel like it's part of my POTS, but then also I have fibromyalgia and I don't know. It's confusing. As well as fatigue, I think it's very common to have fatigue if you live with POTS. And the last one is sensitivity to temperature changes or even just changes in the weather. The weather where I live is interesting because I feel like we kind of have two seasons. Fall and spring are very short. And I find that when there's a sudden change, like all of a sudden it's gotten colder, even if I haven't even gone outside, I feel like my POTS symptoms worsen. And I know from a lot of people that I've talked to who have POTS, very similar things happen, as well as just if my uh, body temperature changes quickly. So if I take a hot shower, I will get worse. If I all of a sudden go outside and it's super cold, or I go to get in the shower and it's cold or a pool, anytime I just like change, <laughs> anything like we talked about before sensory overload sensory changes any kind of sensory anything it's just really bad when you have pots so anyway those are some maybe less talked about symptoms of pots let me know in the comments below are there any other symptoms of pots that you have that we didn't talk about today i'd love to hear about them compare see if we are similar and how we are different if you want to learn how to live the most amazing life with chronic illness make sure you're subscribed and i'll see you on the next one bye friends